OK, welcome back. So last time we wrote down the Lotka Volterra predator prey model, which is a coupled uh, differential equation of two variables, x and y. And x represents my population of bunnies, y represents my population of wolves. And um, you know they're kind of interacting. So wolves are eating bunnies. Wolves need to eat bunnies to keep alive and things like that. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to try to integrate this system using our forward Euler scheme that we derived before. This is forward uh, Euler. And then we're also going to use a really fancy built-in MATLAB command um, called, it's not that fancy, but it's really, really useful, called ODE45. This is a fourth order accurate Runge-Kutta integrator with a variable time step, this is a really good all-purpose integrator. Okay, so this is my all-purpose integrator. Okay, integrator just means that it's stepping my ODE forward in time. It's building up a trajectory by adding up uh, this, this right-hand side. Okay, so um, I like this formulation where I, I say my differential equation equals some right-hand side function of my vector of x and y. And this is my right-hand side function. It itself is a vector, um, and it returns these rows. OK, so that's the first thing we're going to do, is uh, just make this function for our right-hand side. OK, so in MATLAB, I'm going to make a function, and it's going to return my right-hand side. So let's call this d, um, d population, my delta population is equal to um, my Locke Volterra model. And this Locke Volterra model is going to have a few parameters. So maybe eventually you might want to have some of these be time varying. Maybe, maybe A is bigger in the spring. Maybe bunnies you know, exponentially grow in the spring, but not so much in the winter. So for now, we're just going to have A, B, C, and D as numbers. But eventually, we might want to have time dependency. So I'm going to let this be a function of time. I'm going to let this be a function of my population pop. Um, and pop is going to be a vector. So here, um, pop is going to be this vector of x and y. That's my state. It's called pop here. I'm just calling it pop so that there's nothing confusion, confusing. Okay. And, um, and then I also have to give it a, b, c, and d. And I'm going to make these explicitly variables in my function in case I want to change them later. So a comma b comma c comma d. So I have this function called LV model, my Locke Volterra model. It takes in time, a population vector, and my constants a, b, c, and d, and it spits out the right hand side of this this function. Okay, so d pop is equal to um, maybe I'll just make a comment that pop of one is equal to bunnies. This is just a comment. OK, the first entry of this population vector is my number of bunnies. The second entry of my population bunny uh, vector is the population of wolves. And this d pop, the delta population, the, the right-hand side function, returns this d pop vector. And so d pop is going to itself be a vector. And um, this vector is just going to be this right-hand side here. OK, so maybe I'll define x equals pop of 1, y equals pop of 2. And d pop is going to equal a times x minus b times x times y. OK, that's this, uh, this first row here. And the second row is minus c times y plus d times x times y. OK, relatively simple. So I'm creating this function, which is just, the, it essentially returns the right-hand side of this differential equation. Um, and it's a function of the current population vector x and y and my constants a, b, c, and d. Okay, So let's save this. 
Control S. MATLAB wants me to save this as a file called lvmodel.m uh, because my function is called lvmodel, so MATLAB really wants me to save it as the same name as the function. Okay, so now I have that right-hand side function in, uh, in MATLAB, right? I have this thing as a file. And so what we're going to do, um, I'm going to clear all, close all, CLC. This is going to be my main, my main file, and I'm just going to save it right here as integrate main.m. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just define my A, B, C, and D parameters. And you can play around with these, try this out, try different numbers, and see how the, the behavior changes. It's kind of interesting. So A equals 0.4, B equals 0.4, C equals 0.5, and D equals 0.1. I just played around with these and found some interesting values that look kind of cool. Okay, um, I'm going to com come up with a delta T. And I'm going to start out with a small delta t because I want to see if I can get an accurate integration. And we know that using smaller delta t's usually makes things more accurate, kind of more approximately, you know, I'm approximating my derivatives better. And I'm going to integrate for a time span of 0 in increments of dt up to 50. So I'm not telling you what the units are. You could think of these as years or months or days or whatever the, the time scale is. This is a dimensionless model. And finally, I'm going to have an initial condition. My pop at time 0 is going to be a vector. And I'm just going to start out with something like 2, 2. OK, 2 and 2. Um, and maybe I'm working in units of 1,000. So this is 2,000 bunnies and 2,000 wolves, something like that. OK? OK, good. So we're ready to actually try these things out. Um, now, let's try our um, forward Euler scheme. And our forward Euler scheme is relatively straightforward. We're essentially just going to run this iteration multiple times for every dt um, in our time span. Okay, So I'm going to keep track of all of the states at all of these times so I can plot and look at the time history. So I'm going to create a big vector called pop, big capital pop population. And pop colon comma 1, my first column of pop, is going to be my initial population. Okay, My first column of pop is my initial population. And then every time I step this forward, I'm going to get a new column vector with bunnies and wolves. And I'm going to tack that onto the end of this big population matrix. It's going to grow and grow and grow. And it's going to be size 2 by however many DTs I run. And I'm going to be able to plot the rows of this and plot bunny and wolf histories. OK, so now for k equals 1 to uh, 50, the length of my time span divided by delta t. You can do this a lot of ways. This is just what I'm doing. So I want a bunch of delta t's. I want 50 divided by delta t. I'm going to say pop of the k plus 1th column, my new column, my k plus 1th column of population is equal to my old kth column of population plus delta t times my right-hand side of my old population. So plus dt times my uh, right-hand side evaluated at this particular population. Okay, So this is my right-hand side is this lvmodel.m, so lvmodel. And I'm going to call this with, um, it doesn't matter what the time is. I'm just going to call this with time you know, 0. This thing doesn't vary in time. Or I could do it uh, k times dt. That's my time. And the next argument of LV model was my population vector. So we're going to give it pop, the kth column of pop. So I want to give, I want to evaluate this right-hand side at x and y at time k. That's pop colon comma k, the kth column. And then I also have to give this function my a, b, c, and d parameters. Okay. Now this looks a little complicated. It is a little complicated. So I've taken my, my new state, the k plus 1th column of pop, is equal to the kth column plus delta t times this right-hand side evaluated at the kth column of my population vector. So my population vector at time k. 
and all the other A, B, C, D are just to give the right parameters. Okay. Now if I did everything right and I type end, I should be able to run this. It should step through all of these DTs and I should have a big array of population vectors. So let's, let's hope this all went right and I'm going to run this. Okay, good, it ran. And now if I look at the size of pop, it's exactly what we think it should be. It's size two, so it has two rows, one for bunnies, one for wolves. And it has 5,001 entries for each of them. So these are the populations of bunnies and wolves at each of these DTs, all the way from zero up to time 50. Okay? And if I plot them, so let's try that. So if I plot these, so I'm going to plot my first population, colon, comma, one. Uh, let's make that black. And I'm going to plot my second um, I suppose I should do rows, not columns. And my second row of population, let's make that red. And let's put in a legend so that we know that the first thing is bunnies and the second one is wolves. And we'll put in an X label so that we know that the X axis is time and the Y label is population. And now if I run this model, I have a bracket missing. Um, right, okay. Okay, and I should hold on my plot so that I get both of these plots. Okay, beautiful. So here we see the output of our Locke Volterra model. And this was relatively easy to code up. It only took you know, a few lines of MATLAB code to make a nice simulation of this predator-prey system. So this is actually pretty cool. We took this, this system uh, that's been around for almost 100 years, and we plugged in some numbers into MATLAB, and we actually got a simulation of this population dynamics in our computer really quickly. So this is very cool. And what we see is that both of these populations are growing and shrinking and growing and shrinking. They're oscillating, and they're out of phase. Okay, and there's a real interpretation to this, which is that if I, if I have a certain number of bunnies, it can only sustain so many wolves. Okay, so the wolf population goes down. But then, because there's less wolves here, the bunnies just exponentially grow, right? This is great for the bunnies. So they shoot up and have a huge bunny population. Well, now that there's a lot of bunnies to eat, the wolves catch up and they start to grow. A lot more wolves are born. And as more wolves are born, they get hungrier and they eat a lot of the bunnies. So the bunnies dive down and the system oscillates um, you know, like this forever um, where these two populations are out of phase. So this is a really interesting um, model for predator prey. You can model it as an ordinary differential equation. You can uh, simulate it in MATLAB using some kind of a cooked up forward Euler scheme. Um, now the last thing I'm going to show you is um, if you want to, you don't have to do your own integration scheme. You can use this built-in MATLAB function, which I'm a huge fan of. Okay, So I'm going to comment out all of my forward Euler stuff. Um, and so now this thing you know, has, I'm not integrating using forward Euler anymore. So now instead of doing forward Euler, I'm going to integrate using ODE45. So I'm going to say, um, now ODE45 has its own um, syntax. And I'll tell you, it takes three things in. So um, t comma y equals ODE45 of. Now ODE45 takes in three things. It takes in a right-hand side function. That's this uh, LV model right-hand side function. It takes in a time span. So this T span, how long we're going to integrate for. And it takes in an initial condition, this pop zero. So that's all I have to give it, and it's just going to figure this out. And it wants my right-hand side function to be just a function of time and the vector. So I'm going to make it into a function by using this, um, this function wrapper, this handle in MATLAB. So I'm going to make this just a function of T and, and Y, LV model. And LV model takes in T comma Y comma A comma B comma C comma D. 
And all that this is, this is just fancy MATLAB language. So at t comma y means I'm taking this big function of lots of variables, and I'm going to lock a, b, c, and d into place. I'm going to plug numbers into a, b, c, and d. And I'm only going to let these two uh, variables vary. t and y are the only things that are going to vary. So that's what at t comma y means, is that I'm creating a function of just time and y by taking a big function of t, y, a, b, c, and d, and I'm going to lock in a, b, c, and d. Okay, this is a really powerful technique in MATLAB called uh, function handles, and MATLAB wants us just to have a function of t and y. Okay? Um, and I'm using this y vector. So y in MATLAB is often the state of an integration, and so y is really going to contain our whole vector of bunnies and wolves. Okay? If you want, I think you could call this t comma um, pop, and you could just replace all of the y's with pops, populations. That's fine too. Okay? So I have my right-hand side function, LV model, LV model, good. And then I have to give it my time span, how long do I want to integrate for, and my initial condition, pop zero. Semicolon, so it doesn't spit out a bunch of words. And then, um, now that I have a new variable y that's containing all of my information, I'm going to say plot y first column in black, hold on, and plot y second column in red. And if I run this, ODE45 should be doing all of the work. And I get exactly the same um, population dynamics, but I used ODE45 instead of forward Euler. Okay? So this is pretty, um, pretty nice. ODE45 is way more accurate. It's way better than this scheme. So if, if you have a chance, um, play around with ODE45. Try it on some right-hand side, some vector fields. Get a feeling for it. Um, you can always type help ODE45 or doc ODE45. Um, but it's pretty simple. You just, you know, it's a one-line command, and you get this whole trajectory um, very quickly. Okay, so the last thing I want to do, now that I have, um, so size of y, and let's say that this is, let's rename it pop. So pop equals y. Size of pop is 5,001 by 2. So ODE45 spits out columns instead of rows. And so what I want to do, the last thing I want to do is I want to plot the bunny population on the x-axis and the wolf population on the y-axis. And that's easy to do in MATLAB. I can just say plot the first column of pop against the second column of pop. And I'm going to do an x label. And this is bunnies. And my y label is wolves. And we get this very interesting um, diagram. This, this is called a limit cycle. And what this is showing is in time, this thing is just going around and around and around. The, first the wolf population explodes as the bunny population uh, decreases and then vice versa. So I guess it's probably um, this way and then down and then up and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, pretty interesting, um, interesting dynamics. Actually, maybe it's this way. Well, you can figure out what direction things go uh, by just tracing out how these populations vary in time. Um, and so this is another interesting way to plot your information. So this is called uh, like a phase diagram where you plot these, um, these variables against each other. Okay, so this is just a really, really um, quick overview of ordinary differential equations, how to write them down, how to integrate them in MATLAB. There's tons and tons of interesting phenomena that can be modeled using ordinary differential equations. Um, lots and lots of them can be simulated in MATLAB. This is a really powerful tool to you know, write down some model for a system and then start actually looking at it and seeing, does this make sense in terms of my intuition uh, for the system? Okay, thank you.